Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, quite literally, good morning. I'm coming to you now uh, just uh, early right before I head into work. Uh, looking forward to closing out the week, but happy to to start it out this morning uh, in a quick Devo with you guys. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at Psalms 2. Um, we're going to take a quick look at that and see what we can find diving into it. Um, so let's go right into it. Uh, why do the nations rage and the peoples plot in vain? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us burst their bonds apart and cast away their cords from us. He who sits in the heavens laughs. The Lord holds them in derision. Then he will speak to them in his wrath and terrify them in his fury, saying, As for me, I have set my king on Zion my holy hill. I will tell of the decree. The Lord said to me, you are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will make the nations your heritage and the ends of the earth your possession. You shall break them with a rod of iron and dash them in pieces like a potter's vessel. And it kind of goes on with similar themes there. Uh, what I think is important about this psalm is um, it's actually, if you remember back to uh, reading the Gospels, particularly in Luke, beginning with verse 21, you have uh, Jesus being baptized and coming out of the water, and this voice from heaven says, You are my Son, in whom I am well pleased. Um, that language of sonship uh, to the original readers would have stuck out, uh, and especially anytime you hear a voice from heaven, uh, the reader kind of perks his ear up and says, Hey, what's going on here? And then for that voice to say, You are my Son, um, that is a uh, that's a reference that would have been uh, uh, pretty well known to uh, the the original audience of the text, and it references back to um, in in kind of a twofold way to Psalms two, and also to Isaiah forty two, um, and so um, I want to unpack kind of this idea of sonship. Um, anytime you you hear the word son of God or or son or that kind of thing, um, it's less about a. Uh, a an idea of being and more an idea of being an anointed one. Um, kind of the sense you were made for this. Um, I've called you to do this thing. Um, so you get this sense of the, Jesus coming out of the water and God saying, you are my anointed one. Uh, you're going to do some amazing things here. And, and kind of for the crowd to say, perk up and, and, and pay attention. Um, to kind of push this idea even further, if you read in the next chapter of Luke, uh, which is the temptation narrative, you see every temptation is, is started with Satan saying, if you are the Son of God, or even literally since you are the Son of God, if you're God's anointed one, then do these things that make you look like the anointed one. And so the temptation there is to subvert the suffering that Jesus knows will come. That suffering, incidentally, uh, is referenced back in that son idea with Isaiah 42, which is, if you read that, that's the passage of the suffering servant where the idea of um, the one who will come and redeem Israel uh, will do it in such a way that he suffers and lays himself down uh, for, for Israel. Um, so I'll say all this uh, to use Psalm, as an, uh, Psalm 2 as an, as an example of um, how we as Christians can do uh, a better job of reading the scriptures and pointing to Jesus. Um, the, uh, the idea of sonship, kingship, servanthood, anytime you read about that in the Old Testament, anytime you come across those terms in the Old Testament, you should think, how is this like or unlike Jesus? If you're reading through uh, Israel's kings and the history of, of that, uh, you get a great picture of what a king maybe sometimes should look like and what, what they shouldn't look like. And then that example, you ask the question, how does that stand up against the example of Jesus? And as we know, a lot of folks expected Jesus or expected the Messiah to be uh, this king that would uh, drive out the Romans with uh, swords and, and spears uh, in, in the similar way that the Romans came in and, and took over Israel. Uh, but from Isaiah, we get this picture that uh, things will be made right in Israel in a different way, uh, in a way that's unexpected, in a way that um, the king lays himself down for the people uh, in, in a way of servanthood. So. Um, that said, 
Uh, hopefully, uh, you can, can read this passage a little different, be it uh, Psalms 2 or looking back at uh, Jesus' baptism and the temptation and this idea of sonship and, 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 and Christ being uh, God's anointed one. Uh, hopefully, uh, you can take away from that uh, maybe a different way to look through those Old Testament scriptures and, and see that son language in a different way. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, that's the good word for today. So let me pray for us, and uh, hopefully you have a great day and, and an awesome weekend. God, we thank you for today. Thank you, um, Lord, that we have such easy access to your scriptures uh, so that we can study together and learn from one another. Um, Lord, I pray that you open our eyes to um, what it means to follow you, um, that your true leadership is uh, not one of power that's, that's lorded over uh, us or the world. You don't force us to, 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 to worship you, but instead you draw us to you with your love and with your example of servanthood and suffering for us. God, may we be better at suffering for those around us. Lord, help us to uh, embrace all the ways that we can serve uh, our community and, and people around us in, in, in your name. Lord, we love you. Thank you for today. Be with us. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Have a great day, guys.